I got high almost every single day for 10 years. And I got sober when I was 23 years old. The Edna House saved my life and I have to go back to the place that saved my life. So when I go back there, I do whatever is asked of me. Hi. Hi, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you? Good, good. I uh, just wanted to stop by and talk to you about the alumni things that are coming up. Okay, great, have a seat. I have a very good life today. I overdosed a dozen times and was brought back with the naloxone twice. And for the first responders, I, now I would say thank you. A little over three years ago, I hated them. I was upset, I was revived. I did not want to be there. I had to be arrested, I had to lose my family, I had to lose my friends. I had to build a record for myself until I was empty and I was lost. I would not have stopped using if I didn't have to. Three, four, five a day is probably about in the average, and we have certainly seen days where we've seen as many as 10 in a, in a single day. Looking at just recent statistics, in 2010, we gave around 415 patients Narcan. Now I'm speaking not as the region here, but just for the City of Dayton Fire Department. 415 in 2010. So far this year, and the year's not yet over, we've given 1,010 patients Narcan. At least five of them were pregnant at the time that they overdosed. 30-year-old male, unconscious. We show up and there are no overt signs that lead us to believe that this is a, a problem with heroin or fentanyl or mor morphine and there's no family or friends to give us that information. We'll use Narcan anyway. Give me Narcan it cap? doesn't harm the person. It may not help, but it's one of the things that we try to raise their level of consciousness, raise their level of respirations and, and keep them alive. When we give Narcan, we block those receptors so that it's simply not possible for the uh, heroin or the morphine or the fentanyl or whatever uh, the, the opiate is to have an effect on the body any further. We have pulse. I would guess that 90% of EMS in the state of Ohio are carrying Narcan, and it's probably even higher than that, but all of the EMS in our area do. Law enforcement is increasingly more commonly using Narcan. The real key is the rural areas where EMS may have very long response times and where a law enforcement officer, whether a sheriff or uh, a police officer, often is on the scene for many minutes before EMS arrives, I would encourage every law enforcement agency in the state of Ohio to carry Narcan. We've been carrying it for quite some time, and uh, you know, probably four months, four or five months if I'm not mistaken. But it is so important that they carry that because they're working with people that um, could overdose and, and, um, and be close to death. It's important that, that we use that uh, Narcon to be able to save lives. We're also using it in our jail. I struggled with heroin addiction for seven to eight years, and I am now in long-term recovery of more than five years. Today, my life is amazing. I get to help others through FOA. FOA stands for Families of Addicts and it's a support group for family members who have addicted loved ones, for people seeking recovery, uh, for people in recovery. My title is Director of Advocacy. I am finishing up my master's in social work. I have a little boy who turns four in April. And when I hear that uh, people say, you know, well, Nalox like people shouldn't be given naloxone, you're just allowing them to continue to use, it hurts because basically they're telling me that I shouldn't be alive today because if it wasn't for naloxone, I would not be standing here today. 
and I spent many days crying because uh, I, I wanted to be clean and free of addiction's handcuffs so bad. But my life was valuable and other lives are valuable and we wouldn't be looking at it if it was different. If it was somebody struggling with depression and they were trying to commit suicide, you would get them treatment. You wouldn't say, oh, if we get your help, you're just gonna do it again. Um, and I don't know why this is seen uh, so differently. It's a spray and it, it could save a life. Someone could potentially get better and get clean and to not do that, you're telling people that their lives aren't worth anything. I'm very focused on having a life that means something and it's, it's not just that, but when you spend you know seven plus years in addiction where you're not feeling anything and it's all negative, well, then when you do get clean, and yes, it is a, it is a struggle to get clean. It's, I went through absolute hell to get where I am today. But now I can honestly say like 99% of the time, I'm just happy, I'm just ecstatic. How I could be around my loved ones but not look them in the eye. I do groups when I'm asked. Um, you know, I give rides to 12-step meetings. And when there's fundraisers or things like that, I'm always present. I come back to the Edna House for myself. That's what I need to do to stay sober. To the first responders carrying the naloxone, I would definitely thank them. I owe my life to them. But if they didn't help me then, I wouldn't have the life I have today. And you know, I know I was nasty and I was mean and I swore at them and you know, they had to restrain me at one point because I, they, they put me in this bodysuit because I was not myself. I went absolutely crazy. And I think it's very unfortunate that that's the side that a lot of them get to see. That the only side that the first responders get to see is the bad side. But you know, for some people, it does change, and they do get better.